been what's been your initial experience like uh, of uh, working and coaching um, a club like Orlando Pirates? Yeah, before you come to Pirates, already when the offer came in, you always think about um, uh, about a club that has a, a pedigree, a pedigree of uh, of winning trophies, of being uh, uh, let me say a big club in, in African football, uh, have the star on it. Uh, not many teams can show that. Um, and the 80 year, 80 year of uh, you can see that it's a very uh, very old club. Uh, this year is the 80 year, and uh, so all in all, when the offer came, is you you need to think about uh, what is your what can you add on, what is your value you can add on to it, and uh, obviously that's not easy and. Uh, it was a mixed feeling for me when the offer came in. Firstly, I know that how difficult it is to get a team um, uh, into a level to start playing the type of football that people want to see. Meanwhile, also uh, the type of football that people want to see are associated with and to be have uh, been successful. So it is a it is a quite a challenge for me. And has anything surprised you in terms of the quality of the players and the general culture at, at the club? No, it won't surprise me because um, obviously I come also with my own decoration as a being experienced person in, uh, in three continents and coached before uh, big clubs uh, in continent and as well in South Africa. Um, for me, obviously, the, the the effect is that how quick can I get into a organization form that will function to be successful uh, for Orlando Pirates. So. Uh, obviously, I was a bit involved in in the Euro and uh, went quickly out after I have um, we have uh, finalized our deal uh, with the president, and then I needed to go back to Europe and then um, come back. Uh, it was a bit uh, ad hoc decisions that you need to take, um, but obviously I have very experienced people there who would done the deal, uh, done the, the 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 deals already before I came into the club, like uh, players like Mobara, where like. Uh, Riyad Noreddin, so it was actually there, it was presented to me. And uh, so here and there then I needed to look into the team in the preseason uh, and uh, had a quick discussion with the president, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, to say for us it's important not to have that big club because uh, no, big, uh, pro uh, big players uh, in a way of, uh, of the numbers. Um, the best way is that you look to the Premier League, you have 25 plus 3. Uh, you have in the Bundesliga generally 22 plus 3. Um, so the numbers is very much important, otherwise you can't have a quality training session. So you, you need to look into the details more as uh, the volume. So that was my more, 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 more problem. And um, we had um, very good um, organizations in, in way of having fitness coaches already in. Uh, but to guide them in the right way and uh, put everyone in his, in his own uh, way of handling day-to-day uh, -day business. That was the challenge for me. That was a surprise effect. I had first time in South Africa. Uh, I have at the moment nine player, nine people around me, uh, from physios, uh, biokinetists, uh, fitness coaches, scientists. Uh, we have the tracking system. I think the only team in the country has a tracking system, which uh, the player has been tracked in anything, uh, any given second. And so it has, these data has to be analyzed and uh, bring forward to me and, and combine with the training session. So there's a lot of work on to, in a long term uh, process. So, and for me it was only having Elsa with me, uh, we bring Elsa with me because she's a, uh, let me, how can I say that, um, a coach of developing movement, if I can say that the right way. She's a coach of developing movement. So most of the coaches are going into levels where they go uh, doing machine stuff, uh, muscle stuff that uh, is very unfunctional in football. Uh, we have uh, our our game is about acyclic, acyclic movements, acyclic runs, and uh, Elsa is a specialist in that. So it was uh, for me then important. How can I combine with the structure who, who was there already into the day-to-day -day processes? So, so that uh, took a bit while the time. You did so well at Chiefs, and their fans love you. I know that. Is it still the case now that you have joined uh, their rivals? 
It is actually, I must say that, um, that but it's not only, it was also when I was with Chiefs with Pirates fans, uh, whatever the, 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 the point was on that time. Or, it was, uh, I think, uh, people associated with that, uh, because I feel always a part of, of uh, the fans, I've been, always been very open to the fans, and uh, obviously the degree of success what we had, and uh, the way I'm maybe coaching, so it's not only, it was all the, already when I coached the, the Chiefs and then twice uh, around six years, was also the Pirates fans was very, uh, very, let me say, humanistic to my side, or uh, let me say, fan uh, often. And that uh, surprised me a lot because I come from Turkey. Uh, there is war. <laughs> there is war between uh, the two big clubs. There. Uh, there are three big clubs actually. And uh, Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, I'm a Galatasaray. And so. Uh, I'm a, I'm a European and these guys are Asians, so we look to them to more uh, Asians okay. and that's a really fight on it. And what are the targets that you have set for yourself for this season? <coughs> Good word. Um, anything that is on the market you need to play for. Um, I can set my target. You know me as a, as a, uh, as a coach that wants uh, always the degree of success. Success is means uh, to enrich the history of, of, of pilots. We can do that um, because there's a rich history of uh, around the pirates. So, what can we do? How can we do? Or how can I get uh, value add value into the to the club's history? That's the most important thing for us, and uh, that's only success, obviously. And, um, it's not done by me. It's done by all those years now, 80 years of, of history, and um, it's always a privilege for a club a coach uh, to be to be in a in the helm of a team like that. And are you happy with the size and the quality of the squad for this season? <coughs> um, yeah, look, uh, I need to go to that. Uh, to that uh, it's not nice. Uh, last season, the team was not successful for the brand. Um, the problem now is that coming into that, how quick can we adapt to, to the way... Um, or how... Uh, I will say that a little bit different. How can I adapt quick as possible to the material, to the players' perspectives what we have, to find, uh, it's like a cooking cooking chef, uh, he needs to go in the kitchen, you need ingredients, what ingredients do I have, uh, if you don't have eggs, you can't do an omelet, so, so it's a very simple thing, and, and we need to find now, I need to adapt to that, so I need to find the system, organization pattern, forms, uh, what are you doing when you lose the ball, uh, what are you doing, how far can you uh, have a possibility to pressurize the opponents, the moment when you lose the ball, need to you stay deeper or need to see you stay higher? Do you have players that can can win the ball back early, or do we have players who want to sit and win the ball back to to zones? Uh, when they win the ball back, what kind of possibilities do we have? Uh, are you playing a wing wing a wing game? Are you playing a hold ball holding game, a positional game? So there's a lot of uh, questions that you need to discover it in, uh, in five weeks, six weeks time. So it's just uh, very very difficult, and then obviously. The club has uh, uh, situations to fulfill to the sponsors, Carling Cup, uh, Namibia the Cup, uh, so and been invited. So it was actually not very helpful to play this uh, these tournaments. Uh, as much as as uh, I needed to be more and more positive in the in the in the way of um, it is helpful for, but you need to get immediately also the result. So you've been already permanently under pressure in the preseason to produce results and uh, players. Uh, Get the confidence having results uh, already that they're driven, result driven, because some of them are already eight, nine years in the club. So there's an all, all holistic uh, organization, uh, physical, psychological, a lot of aspects you need to look into that. And, uh, it, is not a, it is not a club that you can come in and have time. It's a club you need to come in, you, you have a Ferrari in front of you, you need to race. And who is the one player or two that you think is the one to watch uh, this season and why? That's a good question, actually. Uh, an individual. Uh, there are a couple of individuals in here. Um, I, like to, I mean, I must say that Ted Nidoro is a, uh, He is the type of player that he still doesn't know how good he is. He has, plays with a lot of instincts. But if you can combine the instincts to a situation that um, understand the pattern when the ball in a certain area, what to do. For instance, today we had a situation that um, when the ball is in a, in a, been played already on the road to the side, 
how must he position himself in the way of having an, uh, two angles, not only one angle, so that he can come to his left or to his right. So the ball, if it comes to the first post, or he gets the ball comes to the second post, so that he is already being a little bit more proactive in that sometimes, a bit too early in front of the ball. And so instead of a little bit more buying time in a way of getting away from, you see that against Witz, he was three or four times in a very important situation offside. So he was already a bit too, 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 too active in a situation that before even the ball was received to the side. So elements look into that, uh, Opa Manisa. For me, that one of uh, the sons that South Africa has produced, uh, he was unfortunately in a stage that, um, in a stage that uh, I think he could have developed to to the next level in international football. A great player that um, I enjoy to work with him. For me, firstly, very calm, very relaxed. You see, you see that these are the big type of players. Uh, you can see that uh, the culture leader that has, he's sure of himself. We need to get him quick as possible. That word fit I don't like, but powerful. Uh, that he can have time on the ball. Uh, at the moment he doesn't have time on the ball, he needs to catch up. Um, so he's 30%, 40% ready for me. So when he gets it, it's only 70, 80 percentages. I think uh, Opa could be the season to be recognized. Uh, we have a couple of players, Makola. Oma Kola is at the moment the Bafana Club. Um, he understands the zones, he understands the lines from the opponents, when to go in, how to get in. Um, also with, with a lot of instincts in there. If you can, let me say, minimize that and have me more education in that what he's actually doing. He does that for, um, the instinctive uh, right, but sometimes you need you need more a little bit more knowing actually what's happening in the game. So that you have a one it's like a chess game. He's in a position, as I call the number 10. Um, he needs to be in the channel and in the windows of the opponent. So, in the lines of the opponent. So, the timing is very much important. Sometimes he marks himself, I call that. So, he goes too quickly in a zone that he's been in the, in the shadow of the opponents or been in the line of the opponents that when the ball receives to him, he, the, the, uh, the opponent just steps out and have him. So, he needs to understand those elements a little bit earlier. So, before the ball comes to him. Uh, so understand how to escape. Uh, uh, a player like Iniesta is somebody like that. In, we all know how, how he escapes in the zones. So Paul sees that, uh, but he needs to realize that much more quick and handle it quicker. These are the elements that we need to work on. It. I think these are, these are the boys that really I enjoy to work with them because they are strategists. Uh, I also like very much Tabo Matlava. Um, I wish, if, I wish I had him uh, I had him when he was 18. Uh, I enjoy to work day by day we work with him. He's a, he's a true professional. Um, very, very high work rate ethic. He comes every day and works his, 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 his famous words, his socks off. Uh, unbelievable. Sometimes I just need to say, say to him, you know, relax a bit and go home. Uh, I, must, I must really say that he's, uh, he's, he's marvelous to work with him. Uh, if a coach thinks about and says to his player, hey, you're working too, too much, too hard. Uh, he is in the week between 25 and 40 kilometers in the week. That's a very high level in training sessions. And um, from that, from this 35 to 40 kilometer, there's a lot of high speed runs in the training sessions. So he's already overloading him in training sessions. And we need to reduce that a bit uh, because otherwise looking in through the season is going to be a problem for him. And the general standard of the league, is it improving compared to the, the time you first came in the country? No, it's not. Uh, it has improved. Um, I guess um, the coaches are getting educated. Um, the, 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 the improvement is here, physical. Uh, every team when I came in, I was the one who first started with a fitness coach in South Africa, if I'm not mistaken, and with a lady. Or two ladies in, Adri de Jong and uh, Elsa Storm. And I see that now it has developed. I was the first one who introduced the uh, uh, spinning classes to, to already 99. To spin. Uh, we did a lot of research on that. I'm myself a scientist for my background. But, um, we did a lot already on those years. Um, I think we had more quality developed players on those years. Just think about 
95 to 2000. How many South African players played abroad, but not in second or third degree countries, first degree countries? How many players uh, played on those years in a really high level football, uh, in international football? Uh, how many are we at the moment? That shows you actually that uh, the transfers from here to Europe is not happening anymore. So then it com comes to a level that already the financial part in South Africa has become and uh, has become a, f a fantastic situation. This is, I think one of the babies of uh, the president, uh, Mr. Ayukosa, has done a lot, lots, and he wants this league to be very competitive. I think he has achieved that. Um, not only one or two teams. Uh, so anyone can beat anyone today. You see this season Chippa again. They, they, they're shining, they, they show. So there will be other chippers. Uh, last season with us, with Black Aces. So with myself being involved. Uh, previous years before, I was involved with Ajax. Built an Ajax, that brand. Uh, I think I had a big percentage on it. So other teams will come to the party. But it's about anyone can be fit, uh, f the fitness levels, anyone can be organized. The, the facilities and everything in the, in the Premier League side is nearly everyone has a good facility. When you look into that, the stadiums are fantastic. World Cup 2010 came here, so all these elements has the developed to the to the football. Uh, let me say the product of PSL is, I can say that being uh, coaching in, in world football uh, in, in three continents, I can say that the product of South African PSL is very high. From the marketing, uh, the level of football, from my opinion, is not good enough. You can see that from the national team. And if you've been honest to us, uh, we can see that uh, South Africa has to be now with the product what PSL is, is bringing, um, being in a leading leading position in African football. When you look to Senegal, when you look to Ivory Coast, when you look to uh, Cameroon, this type of country, uh, South Africa has to be above there. These leagues are not competitive to that what is here. So, and that we need to look into that from my side is the, the development of the youth structure. And that's always in my heart and always, uh, um, it, uh, again, that should be not misunderstood. But I think um, when you look now to the internet Bundesliga, the Bundesliga, when you look to every single team in the Bundesliga, you see from 18-year-old boy to 23-year-old boy playing in the Bundesliga week in, week out. How many do we have in South Africa? How many do I have in by Orlando Pirates? How many younger players are playing? Uh, how many with Chiefs, how many with uh, Sundowns, how many with, um, with, uh, with uh, Supersport. So these are the, the driving seats in South African football. If these teams can also produce these younger players, Bayern Munich look for instance, how many in the, in the, in the high generation when they, have, they brought up Schweinsteigers and uh, Müllers and all on, on the same time. And they won at the same time. Barcelona's, uh, they had sometimes eight or nine undeveloped players playing and winning. So we need to look on those elements a little bit more deeper. Then South African football will be leading in, and should be leading uh, leading, to, uh, leading brand in, in, in African football. When African football comes in the mind, should be South Africa first, for my opinion. That is that what we need to achieve. And who is the best player in the PSN, in your opinion? Yo. <coughs> <laughs> a couple of us unknowns, I must say it. Uh, Kamabiliat, uh, I had him when he was very young. Special player. Uh, Kekane, immediately comes in my mind. Sundowns, special player. I would definitely say for Paul Makola. Uh, I think sometimes he just himself doesn't realize how good he is. Tendai Doro, Opa Manisa. I always say Manyama. Manyama is for me, I don't know, this has uh, been not recognized enough. Manyama is a really, really uh, a good player, an international standard, high level standard player. Uh, we're saying on, on the offensive players, defensive uh, lines are a bit problematic. I think uh, the way how Sundowns plays, the, defend, the defenders, they, they're actually very good. Uh, there are a couple of that you can mention actually. and, and um, I liked under 23 national team that went to to the Olympic and had a had a actually a fantastic result in the first game against Brazil and didn't follow that up against uh, and the, the point for me you know, was never Brazil the point for me was always the two games Denmark Iraq 
if you would have um, get four points out of these two games, and that was more than possible, could have been next stage, and that was very important for South African football actually. But in that team, what has been growing that under 23, I think there's a lot of talents in that. And when you look into that, all these Mubara, Kinyin Dollies, Kutubela, um, we have uh, uh, Gift Mutupa. When you look into that fantastic talents, now for us as coaches now is that how can quick can we get, adjust these players to that level that they've been regular in the PSL. Um, you all know Christian Fuchs, Christian Fuchs from uh, uh, Leicester. Uh, when I came to sign 2005 uh, with the Bundesliga side in, in Austria, the Matthias Wood, when I took Jabu Puli with me, there was that young boy, 17 year old, 17. He was the, we paired him up together with Jabu Puli as a, um, uh, to live together uh, in, in in, in the camp when they when we go to the camp. So Jabu Pula was paired up with Christian Fuchs, who's been now in the in the in the Premier League and been the captain of Austrian national team and won last season the, the champ uh, the championship in England. Uh, won the Premier League uh, with Leicester. When you look where like, where the career of Jabu went and where the career of, of Christian went, how did that uh, go? So the president on that on those years said to me when I when I signed the contract with uh, Matthias spoke, he said to me one word, Coach, we cannot get relegated and and we won't win the league. We get you here to develop players. There is a certain pool system here. Any player that plays uh, is under 20 years old and play the minutes in the, in the Bundesliga, there is a pool and we get money out of it. So use this pool, please. And then you had five, six players brought up on that time. And the biggest who made it actually was that Christian Fuchs. We had also Jabba Pulu on that time, a young boy that came with me to, to Austria. So what I want to say that there is a system in place that was actually very nice. That uh, that uh, you could develop players on that time without even a really a pressure. And, uh, and uh, you could bring a 17-year-old boy to a level that you can see the next step was done in the, in the German Bundesliga, Schalke. He went to Bochum, Schalke, and then to England. And today he is one of the recognized players in the world. So we need to look into that in South African football to to bring elements like that. I mean, we had Hosni Bubaras in, in, in Egypt. We did the same uh, with them when I went to Ismaili, coaching Ismaili. Uh, Mohsin Abu Grisha, Ahmed Fati. Uh, they became all top stars in Egyptian football. Also with 17, 18, we used them very early. In South Africa, King Dolly. Uh, in South Africa, we had so many many youngsters that been used on the time. Mobara was his first professional. Tulani Seredo, Tulani Latsvaya. All these players been been used on those, given the, the opportunity, and they became good guys. So, we as coaches sometimes they just need to be ready. And um, <coughs> you win the league this season? Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> Why not? It's the only missing uh, medal in your cabinet. Yeah, it is. It is. It has eluded me a little bit. Um, I said that uh, many times. Uh, when you look then a little bit more back, once we lost, we lost with goal difference. Once we lost with one point. So sometimes uh, then uh, I had two players going away. In the most important game of the season, you win this one, you won the league. Uh, my my players, uh, Patrick Mubutu and uh, Jabu Puli, I'll never forget that. Uh, suddenly they were, they were not in the rooms and then we had an important game against Freestyle Stars. We were looking for them, my, my important players. And uh, yeah, we lost it on that day and we lost the league. So it has escaped me sometimes. But, um, maybe this is for the 80th celebration, maybe it's the one. I will do everything for myself. Uh, we have a great uh, team behind us. Um, I must say that uh, really, really capable people. Uh, we're looking into really uh, individual patterns, we look into uh, to develop the players in a tactical part, we have a great analyst with us, so there's a lot of positiveness around us. It's about now how quick can we get the the situation in that we have, uh, let me say, an ongoing success. It will take time, uh, I know that, I'm not uh, not romantic in that, but we we are making really step-by-step -step progresses and, and I think uh, what I like is that the players are taking it very seriously and uh, that's the first step. Thank you very much.